This is Nash Gruner, the son of Olivia Gruner, and you are listening to the UCW radio show, In Your Face. The number you have reached, 911, has been changed to a non-published number. You're listening to UCW radio. In Your Face. Give it to me, baby. All right, welcome back to the UCW Radio Show, and as always, we have another great guest for you on the show. And I just want to remind you, you can listen to all past shows at ucwmagazine.com, and uh, you know, follow us on. You can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram, and on you can link up with me on Facebook, and so on and so forth. Just plug my name in there, and I should pop up. I normally do. Um, but yeah, and that way you can find out the latest on what's going on with the UCW radio show and also my other shows, uh, Money Never Sleeps and also the new edition, uh, which is the Fit for Life series. And that is not only a radio show, that's also going to be a web series where we're linking up with a major, major, uh, nutritional supplement company and, uh, some things with us. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. We'll have some giveaways. We're going to be promoting uh, good health. We're going to be showing you recipes and techniques. And it's not just about having uh, big names on there because that's not what we're looking to do on, Fit, on the Fit for Life series. We're bringing on... You know, regular, regular people that are in great shape that have their own techniques that maybe, maybe they're, they may be trainers that are training, uh, certain, uh, you know, groups of people and they have a specialized technique that works and they're going to share this stuff with you. And that way, you know, you as, as just a regular Joe going to the gym or regular Joe or Jane going to the gym and you're looking for techniques that work for you, uh, you can learn from them. You know, because not everyone wants to go to the gym and spend the money on a trainer, and I get that. Um, but you can go and you can learn from them and take that with you to the gym so you can get in the best shape of your life. And that's what it's about, staying fit for life and period, the end. You want, you know, I mean, it, this is why we're doing it to actually help. And we're going to be bringing on uh, products. We're going to be showing you the shakes from... Uh, from the supplement company, which is MyProtein, and you can go to MyProtein.com and check them out, and you're going to be able to see the Fit for Life series on there, and I'm going to be talking more and more about this uh, on all the upcoming shows because this is going to be uh, this is going to be a big accomplishment accomplishment for us because we're going to be able to impact people's lives in yet another way. All right, so now uh, with that said. Uh, the independent film, uh, arena is tough. It's tough. When you're a filmmaker and you're on a, a limited budget, it's really tough. And to go in and get help out there, you know, you have people that are going to crowdfunding, they're going to their friends, family, their great uncle that has a couple of bucks to, to go and fund, uh, their next project. The problem is, is that, you know, making the film is one thing, but getting distribution, getting exposure for it is something else. You can make a movie, doesn't mean that anyone's really going to be able, that's going to see it. So the distribution, everything else, uh, is a big thing. And one guy that I know is doing a lot for independent filmmakers through his Urban Action Showcase is Demetrius Angela. Okay, he's doing a lot of great things, and this is this is our guest today, and he's going to be going over, you know, his his uh, journey to date, but also giving you information on the Urban Action Showcase, which happens in New York City, and this year is going to be pretty good, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm going to let him go through it on the show, but I want you to uh, to stay tuned because we're going to be talking about that and talking about some other things on on the show today. All right, so with without further ado. Please join me in welcoming Demetrius Angelo to the UCW Radio Show. All right, Demetrius, welcome to the UCW Radio Show. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Lou? Thanks uh, for having me. Oh, well, thank you for coming on, taking the time. I know you're busy, busy with everything you have going on. Yeah, my God, you're, 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 you're a martial artist. You're uh, an actor, director, filmmaker, expo founder. What don't you do, man? What don't you do? Man, what, what I wish.
wish we could stop right there, but, you know, this is New York City, brother. We got to do it all. That's it. You got your hustle on. Uh, well, what, I, what I want to do... Uh, for the benefit of our listeners, I want to, you know, kind of give them the the backstory on you and what you're doing because uh, I mean you're 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 the quiet guy, you're the guy in the background that that makes all that makes the machine move forward, and a lot of people don't hear about you, okay? And I want them to hear about you because you're doing some amazing things that I've witnessed. So you know, let's kind of get get into your background. You you got in, you got involved in martial arts. What got you involved in martial arts? Um, probably like most kids of the '60s, uh, watching Bruce Lee on television. I recall jumping on the bed, watching one of the Bruce Lee films, telling my father that I wanted to do that, and uh, I was already playing. Uh, contact football, Little League. Mm -hmm. So, I guess in his idea, or in his mentality, this was just another sport. So, okay, so we go down to the rec center, and they sign me up for the Tang Sudo. Mm -hmm. So, in the 70s, we had Tang Sudo before there was Taekwondo, at least where, where I was. I was born in D.C., living in Maryland, so we had Tang Sudo. Well, that's because, uh, that's is, because uh, of Chuck Norris. Martial arts for those who uh, are not aware. Well, that's because and, of Chuck uh, Norris. That's how I, right, I started Dick? off. I said that's because of Chuck Norris. That's why it was big, big uh, back then. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, we had, you know, I was uh, we called June Ree. Do you remember June Ree? Yeah, uh huh, yep. Yeah, so I think that was the big thing in Washington, D.C., June Ree. Okay, so. So, so you, you did you did that and but you kind of when, when you when you first walked in there, what was your uh, your reaction? You thought you were going to be Bruce Lee? Probably, <laughs> you know. Probably that's the mentality. You know, you're you're, you're a kid. Yeah. You're young, and you're thinking, okay, well, this is where it all begins. I got my belt. You know, you you get the uniform with the white belt, so you you know you're ready for action. And I think when you're that young, you're just eager to learn, uh, whatever. Um, and and I, I think, for, you know, for me that was the case, but probably not learning quick enough because I got bored a little quick and wanted to go back to football because mm -hmm. I think I got addicted to hitting people and, and football, so I guess it wasn't enough contact at that time uh, for me. So I took a little break after probably a year. I, I probably got a yellow belt and then decided that, you know, got to play football. And then a few years later, I revisited it. Uh, you know, the parents got divorced. And, you know, as a young, young boy, I guess my mom thought, okay, we need to do something to keep him disciplined. So then I got into a different style because my neighbor, was uh, training, and his dad would train him, uh, have, to have him practice outside. And they wore black geese. Mm -hmm. I was used to the white geese. I was like, oh, man, they must be ninjas. <laughs> 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 I was like, that was, that's the next thing. I'm like, I got to do this. <laughs> so, you know, the mom signed me up, and, and that's when I stuck with it. You know, this was still in Maryland. This was the... Um, Two styles. It was it's something called Asian American Combat System, and one of the the core styles was the Okinawan uh, Shunru Kobayashi Karate style, which um, you know they wore the black geese, but I obviously um, related it to being a ninja. Uh, this was one of the hybrid schools because Bruce Lee obviously had began his Jeet Kune Do style, mm -hmm. which uh, obviously took from other uh, systems of, of combat. And this gentleman happened to be one of Danny I. Santos' uh, friends from the Philippines mm -hmm. that had uh, started a martial arts studio. So along with the Okinawa Shunru Kobayashi, we did the Lago de Mano uh, Arnie, so Filipino stick fighting. Mm -hmm. We also did Western boxing. We did uh, Jiu Jitsu. We did Chinese boxing, uh, Kung Fu. Uh, we did American freestyle, and then we did the art of Kabuta, which is Okinawan Japanese weapons. So the, he he had you doing, I mean, 
for all intents and purposes, you know, going back in the day, the that was, you know, you're talking about the original mi mixed martial arts. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and then, uh, I mean, you, I guess you adhered to that a lot better because there was uh, you weren't actually you. you I, I'm I'm gonna assume that you weren't actually learning how to do uh, katas and, and stuff like that, that you were actually... Yeah, we did that. Did the you... Okinawan style, we had all the katas and that style. Um, yeah, absolutely. We, we were learning it all. But I was also a couple of years older mm -hmm. then, and, you know, because it was so many aspects to, to that, this art, I guess I was fully engaged. Um, like I said, uh, my instructor, uh, Donald S. Batanga, is the uh, author of the uh, Butterfly Manual. So after Jeff Amada came out, I think with the Bali Song Manual, uh, which is of course one of uh, Danny Alfonso's students, uh, my instructor had come out with the Butterfly Manual. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually uh, put me in it. So that was my little claim to fame as a, as a, a young kid, um, you know, being in this uh, magazine. Uh, doing a little demonstration with the Nunchucker and the Bali song. That was pretty cool, though. I mean, you, I mean, you weren't even thinking about all the stuff you're doing now. You were just uh, involved in martial arts, and it was pretty cool to to do something like that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I was totally uh, immersed in, in the martial arts, and you know, as I got older, you know, into my teens. Uh, you, you begin to see the ninjas. The ninjas were big back then. You had the American Ninja with the Michael Dudikoff. Um, so, obviously, I already had the black geese. So it wasn't hard for me to, to make the transition. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got myself, of course, a ninja, uh, uh, ninja outfit and some throwing stars and, and chain, took my, the bed out of my room. <laughs> and began my ninja training. Nice. I, I had made this type of tight rope. I had to jump through uh, the, these wires. I made these these um, obstacles out of yarn, you know, in order for me to, to quote on my skills as a ninja. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's just you know, the film industry. I believe for everyone has had a major influence. Uh, on the martial arts here in, in America um, because it was mass media. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no internet or, or YouTube or anything in those days. Uh, all you had was television and radio. Mm -hmm. And for most of us, you had to turn the channel with your hands. Until they came out the wire. Until they came out the wire that you can do it. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Oh, so. we're, we're dating ourselves, man. That's not good. <laughs> no, that's wonderful because it shows foundation. Yeah, this you is know, this is not something new. This is something that I've done for over 40 years. So, um... You know, the thing is, you know, when you, if you, you think back, just hearing your story, you think back when you were younger and you got involved in martial arts and how everything was new and fresh and how it was, it was exciting. You know, I mean, I, I think about that stuff, too. And you kind of sometimes want to go back to that time and and kind of have those feelings because, I mean, it's when you when you look at things with amazement, you know, you embrace it a lot more. I think a lot of people uh, take for granted that they're able to do certain things, and it's, and whether it's martial arts or other things, and they forget to look at things with fresh eyes and, and embrace it. I, I just miss those moments, so I try to do that in my life, which I know you're the same way because I see it in your face. I see it in your eyes uh, whenever you, you get involved in a project. Well, I think we take the foundation... Uh, that we learn in the discipline of the martial arts, because at least in the 70s, you, you've really got that discipline and bowing and, you know, yes, sir, yes, you know, respect, mm -hmm. diligence, hard work in order to gain, you know, wasn't the money pit, I think, that I feel that it's become mm -hmm. today. So everything was about earning and putting in the work. So you, you take those attributes and you apply them to various aspects of your life and for me you know the martial arts continues to to be a part of my lifestyle um you know like i said having
having those aspirations of being a ninja, I actually wrote Canon films and sent them some photos. Nice. You know, <laughs> of me and my poses because I, I figured, hey, why not me, you know? And then, I guess you say shortly afterwards, 1985, you get, um, you know, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Mm -hmm. You know, prior to that, everybody was a little older. They were, you know, they were your mentors. You looked up to them, Fred the Hammer, mm -hmm. Jim Kelly, Jim Brown, uh, you know, Richard Roundtree, uh, you know, those guys in that era, you know, they were all adults, so I figured, okay, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do it one day, but then The Last Dragon came out, and it was someone that was closer to my age, and I said, oh, it's my time, you know. Mm -hmm. It's my time, so, you know, I really pursued the the acting and trying to to get into the, the action genre. Um, but, you know, living in Maryland at that time, that was a little hard. So, um, once I graduated, which was only a couple of years later, I went to New York for the fact that I knew that The Last Dragon was, was filmed here and and uh, it was going to be California or New York, and, mm -hmm. and I got accepted uh, in college here. So, you know, that's when I really began to uh, pursue the dream of the, the acting, modeling, and, and entertainment business. So when, when you got involved in the acting part of it, you know, I mean, a acting itself, the, 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 uh, the industry is hard to break into. So how did you actually break into it? I'll be honest with you. You, you, you hit it on the head. I, I like to be, I like to be factual, but, but stay positive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is a known fact that less than one percent of the roles uh, available for acting period are for people of color, mm -hmm. and that's from SAG, you know, you know themselves. So that's one thing. So I didn't get a lot of acting. I got a lot of background. You know, nothing where, you know, I was featured and can be seen as far as mainstream. Now, I actually did better in modeling, believe it or not. Um, romance novels was, was big back in those days, and I happened to have long hair. So you I was you were the, the guy in the cover. Yeah, I was a black <laughs> baby, yo, man. I was black, yo. Nice. Yeah, man. I got nine book covers, man. Nice, so nice. That and the, and the calendar thing. So that, you know, that put me on the map, you know, as far as the industry was concerned. But when it came to the actual action roles, you know, there were very few and sparse, and, and especially for someone that looked like me, that wasn't the uh, mainstream of a, quote, black person. Uh, you know, I had long hair and, you know, different features. So um, the B... Uh, film, independent film, um, Avenue became a prolific uh, place for me. Um, so that's how I started doing the independent action films. And believe it or not, the first one was a ninja film. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You, you got to bust out your gi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, actually just the bottom part, because, you know, I was always, you know, into the hardcore training, and I was doing the weight training, so I had a pretty good physique, so, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was good, you know, it was a great experience, because, you know, in the independence, you learned a lot, it's just a smaller scale, because I've already did, uh, the bigger things as a, you know, background person, right. So I didn't really see much difference except the fact now I get to, to be in the spotlight. You know, a couple of less people, but we're getting the work done. Right. And that actually inspired me to do it myself because I saw that, you know what, they're not going to give you anything. You've got to go take what you're looking for or take what you want. That's it. And, and then I guess the early 2000s, I started my own company, mm -hmm. um, and then I, I hooked up with one of my dojo brothers who had, had that same vision. Mm -hmm. So we brought our, our companies together to work together, and we, we've been growing from there. Well, I, I think that, you know, 
your 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 adversity your adversity in the beginning actually made you who you are today in the entertainment industry okay and this is the stuff you know the second half of the show uh we're gonna go you know over what you're doing right now because it's like an amazing thing but i know that when you with your film company and your, your production company i mean you 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 get behind the camera you get in front you're you're doing the action scenes you're doing all this stuff but the the big thing that i see that you're doing which i want everyone to pay attention is that you're paying it forward you're opening up doors for people that don't that did not have doors there for them to open and you're opening those doors and I've seen you do with so many people and I don't think you get enough recognition for that but I want to give you recognition right here that you're giving an opportunity to a lot of people and I hope that if, if any of you guys listening are part of any of uh, Demetrius Angelo's projects I hope you appreciate it you better give this guy a hug because you you can't you, I mean not a lot of people out there think about other people when they're making a film and you know that's true because yeah, it's I mean I see it so I just wanted to give you the I just wanted to give you that pat on the back because uh, it's factual well I appreciate that you know I didn't want to follow the cliche of hurt people hurt people mm -hmm. <laughs> I want it to be the change uh, I guess in the link I wanted to 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 change um, basically the I guess you can call it um, routine you know instead of saying oh well they didn't do this for me well I'm not going to do that for them I decided okay well this is what's missing we need heroes that reflect minority image and interest so I said okay let's focus on our films being diverse and showcasing and breaking the stereotypes of the mainstream. So we're talking about using multicultural casts, mm -hmm. uh, using a lot of females as lead characters, and breaking that, that um, mainstream of, of them being objectified. Uh, especially women of color. You're not the maid. Mm -hmm. You're not the prostitute. You're not the other woman. So, you know, we wanted to make sure that they were powerful, um, that they were, of course, beautiful, because that's what women are, mm -hmm. but that they were actually um, doing something to change the mentality of what, you know, the, the viewers were, were expecting of them, I should say. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that goes across the board, uh, men and women alike. Um, it, it's too bad that even today that for the most part, when you see people of color, you, you got them as slaves, butlers, buffoons, or hoodlums. And um, what we've been doing for since... Uh, basically 04 is trying to change that mentality uh, through artistry mm -hmm. and through um, you know the the realm of, of venues and events uh, that you know will give people opportunities to make those changes uh, I think you're you're doing some amazing stuff Demetrius and uh, what we're gonna do right now because we, we we have to go into uh, the Urban Action Showcase, but I also want to talk about some of the films you made. But what we have to do, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back on the UCW Radio Show with Demetrius Angelo. Demetrius, stick with us. Uh, listeners, stick with us. We're going to be right back. Just listen to the song. You're going to love it. We'll be right back with you. There's a place I know where everybody goes. Kick their sneakers off and leave it on the floor. And they all know your name, cause money don't mean a thing. It's crazy, it's sexy, it's cool. And the women do it things that you never ever thought you'd see. Yeah. 
alcohol and let your body go. And baby, don't be scared if you just lose control. We know why you came. It don't mean a thing. It's crazy. It's sexy. It's cool. And the women doing things that you never ever thought you'd see. On the UCW radio show, we've been speaking to Demetrius Angelo, and now we, we spoke about his martial arts background. We spoke about what he was doing with his uh, with his uh, Fabio type of stuff, and I love that stuff with the novels. And we're, we're also talking about the films that he was doing, and uh, we're going to talk about the Urban Action Showcase in a second. You guys are going to love this, but uh, Demetrius. Uh, tell us about uh, some of the titles, some of the movies you've made. Sure. Um, as I mentioned before, my uh, film company is uh, ASC Productions, Action Scene Combat Productions. And I hooked up with uh, my partner, uh, which was my dojo brother from Troopers Touch Films. So we formed uh, ASC Troopers Touch Entertainment, which had to do with not only both writing and uh, producing films, but also distributing films, because distribution obviously is the key. Um, you can make as many films as you want, but if you don't have any um, avenues to distribute and get the product out there, you're, you're still stuck. Sure. So fortunately, uh, having very similar backgrounds, the first thing we wanted to do is to pay homage to the era that we grew up in, which was the, quote, black exploitation era. So our first film was a homage to the famous uh, Three the Hard Way. Now, Three the Hard Way was Jim Brown, Jim Kelly, and Richard Roundtree, which people know as Shaft. And that was where three major stars back in the day, uh, and they came uh, uh, together and made this, this action film. So we decided to make a film called Three Times Harder, My Man's in them. And basically, we were uh, some sort of relatives of these guys who were trying to, to make the changes today that they were trying to make back in the 70s. Okay. Uh, so that was one of our first titles. And then we had uh, another homage to remember Cleopatra Jones with, with uh, Tamara Dobbs. So uh, my partner came out with uh, uh, something called... Um, Naomi Black, which is, was about a female operative, a black female operative, uh, trying to make changes and, and fight against a corrupt government. Uh, then we came out with um, something called uh, SEALs. And before there was the Expendables, we had SEALs. And SEALs were basically the female uh, black ops operatives. Um, same thing uh, with the government, you know, trying 
trying to infiltrate the government from the inside to expose corruption. And then, you know, we had to pay our homage to the ninjas, so we came out with the film called I Can Hit You. Okay. To kill with one blow, and did, uh, did you bust? Did you bust at the the gee bottoms again? No, no. I, in this one, um, I did have, I did fight with the sword, um, so I did use some of my skills. But I had uh, just regular uh, cargo pads on, okay. you know, the black modern, off, modern day ninja, the, the modern day ninja. <laughs> yeah, you know, we had to take it to the next level. Yeah. And what's interesting, you know, either myself or my partner, Lamar, uh, Jay Wengster, will write, and then, but he's the magic man with the camera and, and all of the um, editing, and I do all the casting and the training of, of, of the, the cast members, and then, of course, the, the distribution. Uh, but um, so, what so, makes so us he, unique so, is... So he's the one that's arguing with, with his wife, and you're the one that, when you're all said and done, you get to sit down and watch TV. I know what the editing's about, man. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, the editing is serious. Yeah, that's some serious yeah. stuff there. The, the editing, but you know, it's an art form, man. It, it, it's an art form. So, you know, and then you know, what, what, like I said, what gives us the advantage is that we are martial artists, so we didn't have to call in stunt people. We didn't have to, you know, get a fight choreographer. We uh, were able to train the talent ourselves and do our own fight choreography. So we were able to basically, between him and I, you know, run the whole ship, which would take usually another four or five more people. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a, a true blessing to, like I said, the martial arts has given us um, to be able to to compete in this genre called action, which is the blockbuster genre. You know, there's no blockbuster dramas, there's no blockbuster comedies, there's no blockbuster horrors. There's only one blockbuster genre, and that is action films. And, and that that's where best the money roll, rolls in from that. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That Those are the most expensive films to make, and the, the most expensive, or, or the highest budget films, you know, that they grossing the, the, the big budgets, you know, and, the action genre. And I'll leave it add on to that for, for you listeners there. Action, you know, even, you know, the Marvel movies, you had, that's a lot of action. Those action films, you know, and those are billion-dollar grossing films. The stuff that you see with, with The Rock, he has action films, you know. I mean, they're that, I mean, these are blockbuster films, you know, so you're in that realm. But, but, you, but do you think that the... Uh, the, the action genre gets enough recognition for, for, for the work that's done? Yes and no. And I'm glad you, you asked that. Uh, which brings me to the, the next um, hole that I'm seeking to fill. Mm -hmm. And that's the fact that the action genre is huge, but when it comes, again, to people of color and, and diversity... It's once again a minority, mm -hmm. and then you know, in recognizing that, that's when I uh, started to figure out a way to make a change and make a difference. And for me, the best way was to have an event that would incorporate not just a film festival that highlighted diversity and and the multicultural achievements within the genre, but also honored them through an award show, but also educated, informed, and facilitated by offering distribution and offering um, the tools necessary for anyone wanting to get into this genre. And that's when we uh, built the Urban Action Showcase, uh, which had its inaugural uh, debut in, in 2013, in which uh, Megahood and you guys were were so graciously uh, a part of uh, helping us do what we were doing. I mean, it was an amazing, it was an, an amazing event, and uh, just just the fact that you you guys came together to put that together was a big accomplishment. 
because, you know, that takes, I'm going to say it, it just takes a lot of balls to do that, Demetrius, because it's not easy. It's not an easy task. Agreed. I wish it was just balls, though, because it took all my money, too. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it does that, too. If it, if it was just balls, I'll be okay. But it took every dime that I, that I had and, and didn't have, you know, because obviously, you know, MasterCard and Visa were the major sponsors. Yeah, there you uh, go. As in my MasterCard and Visa. <laughs> so, um, needless to say, um, my, my debt is a reflection of my worth. <laughs> Because I, I totally put in everything I had, you know, I was all in, you know. And I, I'm thankful for humble beginnings, and we're, we're still trying to grow today, you know, and, and get the word out and, and let people know that, listen, we have a, a venue that supports the multicultural image and interest of, of, of um, the action genre. And, you know, just like a Comic-Con and, and, and things of that nature, you know, we need people to come out, support it, be a part of it, and to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, you know, just you setting, uh, setting the stage for an event that, you know, honors action films and the people that are behind the scenes and and just seeing the hard work. Because I mean, when I was at your event, there were films that you were you were uh, showcasing some shorts that if I wasn't there, I wouldn't know about them. If I wasn't there, I wouldn't see you know how the the work that that these guys put into it. And just the fact that you acknowledge them in front of their peers, you made their year. And that, that's well, a big we think thing. So. But that's a big yeah, thing. Yeah, we, we think so. Given them, it, well, well, the wonderful thing is that the opportunity that we've given and we continue to give has been supported uh, from the start by the uh, Cinemax brand of HBO, which is the action brand. And um, to, to have that type of support... And to be able to be at the largest theater in New York City and the crossroads of the world and Times Square, AMC 25 theaters, that, that's big for, for any artist, uh, filmmaker, to be able to have their film screened in this theater. You know, these were some amazing opportunities uh, that we've offered. I'm going to add on to that, Demetrius, because be, having your film screened there is the equivalent, and I, and I was just watching America's Got Talent, okay, and they, they, the big thing with them is that they're, the, the final show is at Radio City Music Hall, and that is, right. like, I mean, performing there. It's not even about the show, it's just performing there. So having your film screened at AMC 25 on, in Times Square is like a big thing. Big thing. That could exactly. be the highlight of some people's careers. I, I think so. You know, it's a wonderful beginning, yeah. if, if nothing else. And it's, and it's also a wonderful, um, I guess, icing on the cake. Because, you know, along with giving uh, new talent opportunities, we also remember the people that paved the way um, from the past and, and, of course, those in the present and those in the future. Um, our good friend, uh, uh, Alan Goldberg, uh, made some calls for us and had uh, Isaac Florentine come down. And, you know, he's responsible for the uh, Power Rangers and for a lot of uh, action films from with Van Damme to um, the, the Ninja series, Ninja 1, Ninja 2 with Scott Atkins. Um, uh, I believe he might have done the, the Undisputed. He's definitely doing Undisputed uh, 4 right now. Mm -hmm. So it's a possibility that he, he did that series as well with Michael J. White. And, you know, Isaac Florentine is a great martial artist who is a director who's uh, worked with, I guess you could say, the best in the business. And, you know, he came down, and what makes our, our event uh, special and unique is the fact that the celebrities actually teach and give back um, to, the, to the, the up-and-coming generation. So Isaac taught um, how to uh, film a fight scene. Uh, ben Ramsey, the writer of, and director of Blood and Bone, uh, of Dragon Ball Evolution, 
the big the big hit. He uh, did a from script to screen um, uh, master class, uh, and then we had Fred Fred Williamson, who was definitely a pioneer of, of the film business, starting in the seventies. The Hammer. He, the Hammer. Yep, the Hammer. <laughs> you know, he 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 taught on on pr- production and, and and so forth. And last year we've had some. Uh, we had the Lady Dragon herself. The queen of, of martial arts action, uh, Cynthia Rothrock, uh, teaching screen fighting. Uh, Maurice Crump, who had just come off doing a film with Tony Jaa, Protector 2. Mm-hmm. He taught screen fighting. And, you know, we had Don the Dragon Wilson, TJ Storm, um, so many, so many stars. Uh, um, Show Wheeler. Um, time out from the Last Dragon, uh, and some of the grandmasters of the martial arts, uh, be judges for a, a, a event that we launched called called the Action Martial Arts Action and Talent Competition, which allowed the practitioners to get a walk on uh, role in an action film. And I'm happy to report that uh, uh, Bobby Samuel's film company. Uh, is doing something called Beast, and the winner, which uh, for the adults was Marco Dancer Johnson, uh, is going to uh, make his debut in that film, which they had started production about two weeks ago. So that was a success. Um, and we're just looking to continue to grow and, and, and get you know more people on board to, to, to just help make a difference and, and to make a change uh, and the thing is, the tools are available. Mm-hmm. You know, we have digital distribution through all of the avenues. We have Vimeo. We have Amazon. We're working on getting uh, some distribution for the winners with Cinemax this year. And, uh, you know, we have some aggregated co- connections with Netflix and uh, video on demand. So, you know, the, the avenues are available. We just need the people to come out, support it, and take advantage of it. See, it's it's amazing to me, Demetrius, that you you know when you guys started the Urban Action Showcase, you you had a vision, you brought in some some top talent, and to I mean, how who how do you go to to uh, an expo, and how do you have the ability to go and be taught? screen fighting be taught how to make a movie from i mean from from people that have done it that paved the way that in 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 the world of entertainment they're big names so where else do you get that if you go to comic-con you know you know you know you're talking to not too many people people go up there they do their thing on stage and there's there's a distance there's a disconnect you make everything you make everything very um I make it personal. Yeah, personal, you know? touchable. I mean, just very close. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, that 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 was the the whole part of the 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 protocol. The protocols are information, uh, education, facilitation, and, and exposure. And if you don't have facilitation, you know, you're going to be missing a, a major opportunity as far as when you know trying to 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 learn and and trying to be a part of of you know such a big big genre mm-hmm. and fortunately these people that you're mentioning michael john Wyatt, kelly hugh um don the dragon wilson cynthia rothberg all these people are martial artists which means they have the foundations that that i grew up on mm-hmm. and they understand about giving back and they understand that the only way to to progress is to give back. Each one, teach one. They understand these these protocols, these these this character mm-hmm. of the martial arts. So they, you know, all were on board to to do whatever it took to help the next generation, because they realized, you know, what is needed for us to to continue to progress in this art of of action film. Um, making and acting. See, and you know, j- just for you know, our listeners that, that are that that's you're hearing the uh, the story of the Urban Action Showcase and Demetrius Angelo. I want to say something. 
that most people that I've come across, and, and not everyone, but a lot of people, when they go and they do something, especially in entertainment, you know, some people do it because they love it. Some people do it because, you know, this is something they want to do. Some people do it for the money. Okay, they're, they're money-driven. They're thinking about how can I profit from this, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But what, what you've done, Demetrius, is that you put your heart into this, and you're not thinking about, you know, how can you make a dollar off of this. You're putting this together in order to lay the groundwork for something bigger later on. So you have vision for what you want to do. It's not just about what you what can be done for me now. Is what will be done later in general. So uh, exactly, yeah, it, that's it, a good it, thing. It's not about money. It's about a movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people all, all the time: this is not an event. This is a movement. Um, whenever you're you're fighting to the, the resistance, whenever you're resisting um, the mainstream, whenever you're 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 pursuing for change there's always a resistance and that resistance will if it's about money will have you out in the first round mm -hmm. because believe me you're not making any money um you know when you do something like this especially with the grassroots mm -hmm. um so for me it was about okay how can i make it easier for the people who are coming after me to do what i've dreamed to do and um Looking at, at the mainstream and seeing how things are, you know, what can I do to affect change? Because, you know, a lot of times we complain and we talk about things, but complaining and talking never may change. It's doing that, that's always made the difference. So, you know, what we do is what makes the difference. And like I said, the, the most important aspect is for the people to take advantage of it. That's you know, it. it's not good enough to hear about it, to talk about it. I'm like, listen, if there's something for you and something that's specifically about elevating you as a people, you need to take advantage of it. Or else, believe it or not, it will dissipate. Right. And, you know? and this is a fact. This is a fact. This is why what you're doing, you, you're, again, opening up a door. You're, you're offering potential distribution. You're offering exposure. You're offering a lot of stuff. I don't see why any filmmaker that, I mean, independent, you're, you're making a film. You, you have these itty-bitty budgets. You need that something extra. You're giving them that some, something extra. I don't understand why they wouldn't come out, kiss your feet, and say thank you. Because it's hard, Well, I think it, it's a re-education process. You know, uh, when you get so used to the status quo, you know, it's sort of like when the gates open, you don't know if you should run through it or you're seeing if it's going to close. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we, we get that deer in the headlight syndrome. Um, and I think that, you know, the more we begin to change our mentality, the more people talk about it, the more people let them know that, hey, this exists, come be a part of it, come make a change. But what you mentioned was um, we do offer a no-budget contest called Blood, Sweat, and Bones, mm -hmm. knowing how expensive it is to make the action genre and to how much you invest in this genre. We have this Blood, Sweat, and Bones uh, no-budget um, contest for both features and shorts, uh, TV pilots, webisodes, etc. Because there's some great talent that doesn't necessarily have a lot of money for bells and whistles. So this is truly an opportunity for everyone, regardless of your your level um, and your your budget when it comes to uh, filmmaking. So how how would someone that may be uh, an up and coming filmmaker they're they're making a film on zero budget and they're they're trying to make it all work. How do they get involved in the urban action showcase? How do they get involved in in what you were just talking about the blood sweat and bones? How do they get involved in all that um i I try to make it as simple as possible www dot <laughs> urban action showcase dot com is that simple uh we have um the submission button for 2015. It gives you all the different ways you can submit. You can submit by mail or straight online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, 
we have the, the About Us section, the Registers section uh, for production companies or filmmakers who just want to exhibit and show their, 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 their content or even their comics because, you know, the comic book industry is, is part of the action genre. That's where you get most of your, your blockbuster films from, all your X-Men's and mm-hmm. your Batman's and your Superman's and, you know, all these things in between that come from the comics. So we have a script contest. We have an action comic contest. Um, so, you know, we, we have it from the 2D to the 3D. You know, opportunities to to really uh, be exposed. Um, the the expo portion allows exhibitors to, to show off, you know, whatever they have, be it uh, the, the latest film or their newest comic, or you know their web uh, skills. You know, this is show business. There's a business side to the show. So we have um, you know graphic designers who come out to exhibit. We have uh, webmasters who come out to exhibit. Um, you know, there's just so many aspects to the film industry, and this is, uh, venue gives everyone an opportunity to, to, to be seen and to uh, place their content or product uh, before a niche audience. And again, this is unique because you have, I mean, there are, Film festivals out there, they're, they're, you know, you have big ones, you have small ones, but for to, to get an opportunity like what you're offering with the Urban Action Showcase, I believe it to be unique, and I do believe that any filmmaker out there that really wants an opportunity, I mean, it's just a distribution part of it. If they're able to, to link up with you, just to get that is a big thing. You know, I mean, where else, where else in the world are you going to bring your film somewhere where Cinemax is going to be looking at it? You know, exactly. I, mean, it, it, I mean, especially exactly. on this level, and it's not like they're they're they're, they're paying a gazillion dollars to get in front of you, to get in front of anyone. Believe it or not, the features to to submit for a feature is twenty dollars for 20, shorts and twenty or, or ten dollars. Twenty bucks. <laughs> yep. I mean, come on. And I mean, ten dollars for a short. <laughs> look, come on. I mean, twenty bucks. You get. Yeah. I mean, look, you filmmakers out there, you're listening to this show. You know what? You need. You're in New York. You're here, Cal. Wherever you are in Hawaii, you can be in ten buck two for all I care. For the twenty bucks, shell it out and be a part of this because you know something. You don't know what door could be open for you. I mean, any door. Exactly. I mean, you don't know who's watching because a lot of people are watching here. Trust me on that. You know, so I think you're doing a great thing. Actually, I know you're doing a great thing, Demetrius. And, you know, keep going with it. Keep pushing and keep making everything happen because I know as as much as we're talking right here is that your films, your event, everything you're, you're doing is making a difference and will continue to make a difference for years to come. And I appreciate the fact that you came on the show and I appreciate the fact that you're doing that because you're giving the next generation an opportunity. And I love it. And that's why that's why I, I, I hold you in the highest regards because I know you're doing things for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. You're doing it for the right reasons, and you're creating opportunity, and I love it. Well, I appreciate it, Lou. Like I said, you've been a supporter from the beginning, uh, so I really appreciate you know you utilizing your platforms to help people like myself um, to help others. You know, you're talking about the circle of uh, of life. You know, you're paying it forward, and I'm paying it. And it's coming back around. Yeah, that that's all we can do is keep making it happen. So you keep doing that. And for our listeners, you know, make sure you go to UrbanActionShowcase.com, uh, check it out. And if you want to check out and, and learn more about Demetrius Angelo, the Urban Action Showcase, you can go to UCWMagazine.com and you know just look at look at the page. You, you know, there's a page there, and you'll see it. You'll have uh, YouTube. You'll have other things. You'll have a bio, and you'll have other information on there about what's going on with Demetrius, what's going on with the Urban Action Showcase, and how you can get involved in this movement that is sure that is surely going to change the action genre in a positive way and get more of these talented young 
you know, filmmakers out there because everyone started somewhere. Everyone started somewhere, and you just need an opportunity, and there have been action showcases giving you that opportunity. Demetrius, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We're going to have you back on again to, uh, you know, in the future to talk about your, your latest adventures, your latest films, your latest things that are going on, because I know things are uh, change with you rapidly. So by the time the next time you come on, we're going to have a lot of, a lot of things to talk about. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lou. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And uh, listeners, make sure that you uh, tune in to the next episode of uh, the UCW Radio Show. We have some great guests coming on and uh, a lot of notables, recording artists, uh, pro sports guys and girls, and some Olympians, too. So stay tuned, and we'll be back with you on the next show. Initiating shutdown sequence. You're listening to UCW Radio in your face. What is your major malfunction? So let it be written. So let it be done. Ladies and gentlemen, my mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you.